What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Believe episode. This is episode number three, and today we are here with a special episode to recap the Detroit Lions win over the Arizona Cardinals to put him at two and one on the season. An absolute massive, had to have it kind of win. Coming off a really difficult loss to Tampa Bay where it just felt like they gave it away. And seeing what the rest of the NFC North did this weekend. The Bears lost, dropped to 1-2, and two, but the Green Bay Packers handling business on the road against Tennessee. And Minnesota beating the Houston Texans. Not just beating the Houston Texans, but destroying the Houston Texans. Absolutely shutting down that offense. And a dominant win to move to 3-0. and oh. The Lions needed this one to stay right there, stay within a game, stay within the race, heading into Monday Night Football against the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks and man this felt really good this was one of those games that just felt incredibly comfortable as a fan you just felt like you were in control of the game the entire time I know the score was only seven points but you just felt so in control it never felt like it was in doubt from jump you go out and you score your first possession you respond to Arizona Cardinals touchdown with a touchdown of your own and from there on you just felt like you were in control you won field position battle you forced turnovers defensively you had your own turnover so we weren't perfectly clean but you won the field position battle you won the time of possession battle and you just felt in control of this game the entire way and I gotta be honest this is one of my most accurate predictions in terms of the score prediction week one was my best I was one point off because they don't kick an extra point in overtime but this week the Lions end up winning by seven points I had us winning by seven 24 17 Obviously, we could have had an extra point with our extra point. But we also ended the game with a Jared Scoot Scoot Golf play action bootleg where he decides not to throw it. Gardeck bites really hard on the run fake, which was a really nice play on his own because the personnel lines came out with two tight ends, jumbo package offensively, and out of that package all game long, they had run the football. I mean, I don't even think we utilized that package in our first two weeks. It kind of clearly set this set the standard for what the Lions wanted this game to be. But you finally now decide to throw out of that look. And on a second down and eight, you decide to throw out of that same personnel package. However, Goff doesn't like anything, so he gets out of the pocket, sees some green grass, St. Brown lays a block, and Jared Goff takes off, shows that scoot scoot now for the second time this season, and slides down for a first down. And as I said in my preview video, I felt like this could end very similarly to we played the Jets years ago, Stafford got out of the pocket, scrambled, we won by seven points, slid down for a first down. I think that game was actually 24 to 17. I think that we'll put up about 24 points. I don't think we'll light up the scoreboard necessarily. I think we could. I was teetering on putting us at 30, but I think this will be one of those games where lines are cool with really owning time of possession, being very efficient offensively, taking care of the football, and winning a sound game. I think this one turns out 24 17 the Lions win with the ball in their hands makes me think back I don't know what year it was what year we beat the Jets beat them 24 17 I remember Stafford taking off and he slid down the end of the game with the ball in our hands and it was just like a secure win I think a game this game may end something just like that I mean, it's a lot better of a year for me in terms of predictions than last we don't have to talk about last year but it's been a lot better so far this season and I just want to give myself a little pat on the back because it's just weird. Like, I wouldn't have said this if it wasn't that strange that it actually ended with golf sliding down for a first down, and that's how you ended the game. I had to at least point this out and play the clip. For the Lions in this game, let's start off with the biggest positive first, and it's clearly the defense. Now, obviously, I haven't rewatched the game yet, but it's clearly what the defense did. It's what the secondary did in this game. The secondary was, to me, incredible. And this had been, you know, the one position group where, you know, we've had some up and down performance. I had liked what Carlton Davis had did to this point, but like we talked about in previous episodes, Carlton Davis had done well. You had some hit and miss from Terry Arnold. We had the defensive pass interference than there. Amik Robertson has looked good, and the movement from to Brian Branch to safety has been incredibly massive for the Lions because of the flexibility it's offered to Kirby Joseph to play single eye safety. Brian Branch to step down and just take on wide receivers one-on-one. -on -one. Now, hopefully he's okay. He was banged up. Sam Laporta also reportedly has a sprained ankle according to Dan Campbell, so he may miss some time, but it was about that secondary in today's game. And the concern was, look at the weapons that Arizona has. Straight up, they have a really good weapons across the board. Marvin Harrison Jr. took off last week. A lot of things off script that he did, which I think is crucial. Because for the Lions in this game, as much as they had all these weapons, we know the key when you play Kyler Murray is, man, you have to contain that guy. You cannot let him run wild. And honestly, we contained him better than we did Baker Mayfield. Because clearly there was an attention to detail on that. The first drive, he gets out. Big 20-yard chunk. I believe it was on a first and 20, where he gets out of the pocket, scrambles 20 yards, and he he also had a design run on the first drive, which ends in a touchdown. Outside of that, 
He essentially did nothing with his legs in this game. The Lions did a great job in terms of collapsing the pocket, keeping him in the pocket. They did a couple things schematically, like, for example, when they played man coverage, oftentimes blitzing out of those man coverage looks to make sure that you had enough defender for each gap, basically defensively. The rush lane integrity was on point in those spots. And what I loved about that is, again, we got to see Aaron Glenn. He is who he is. Aaron Glenn likes to play man coverage. It's what he wants to do defensively. It's what the personnel is here for. And now we have now married what he likes to do with that personnel. And we saw across the board, different cornerbacks making plays. Not to say it was perfect. And again, I'll see more when I get to rewatch it, but multiple pass breakups from Carlton Davis, who was big. He looked like a number one cornerback in this game. Terry and Arnold, after having a rough defensive pass interference, again, he responded being targeted multiple times by Marvin Harrison Jr. Specifically when one-on-one and that's like the back shoulder, the fade stuff they like to get to. He had a lot of success, gave up like a deep comeback route, but he did really well as well. Brian Branch, every time he stepped down in man coverage, did his job. Kirby Joseph did work in man coverage as well. He had the nice pass breakup on the tight end. We had guys getting hands on the football. And I've said this and I'll say it again. It's the one thing that our defensive back unit has missed under Aaron Glenn. We've done everything else. We've come up with interceptions. We've allowed very low completion percentage. What we had missed under Aaron Glenn was defensive backs, specifically cornerbacks, not safeties, cornerbacks that could take the football away and come up with pass breakups. We were always really low in passes defended because we didn't have the playmakers there. We didn't have the length. We didn't have the guy with those ball skills. Well, now we do. And those guys are making plays on the football. It's what we talked about before this game and in this game against that weapon, that variety of weapons. We got to see that we have those guys now. Plus, on top of all of that, one thing that's always been kind of an issue with Aaron Glenn defenses, wherever he's been, and I'm not going to say his defenses, he was a secondary coach with New Orleans, but they had a lot of big plays. I didn't know that that would change with the Lions. You know, you do a lot of single eye safety, you do a lot of cover one, you can give up some big plays. But so far this season, the Lions have really limited the big game-breaking play. And some of that schematic, I thought coming into this game, they'd want to kind of contain, squeeze to the middle. We saw a lot of first downs, a lot of quarters coverage, a lot of cover four, four singles in the middle of the field, make Kyler Murray throw in the traffic, make him throw in those second-level throws. Don't give him the easy one-on-ones on the outside. But this game, just like week one against LA, where a year ago we saw the difference, right? Week one against LA a year ago, uh, a year ago in the playoffs, big play, big play, big play, touchdown, kept them in it. This year, we made them earn everything. They had no big, they had earned everything. The big plays that teams are now getting are defensive pass interferences. That's it. The Lions are not giving up big plays in the passing game. So some of that schematic, some of that is, again, you now have the personnel to match what Aaron Glenn wants to do. For comparison's sake, just to touch on a couple quick numbers here, just to give you an idea of what this team was doing before they came into this game. Again, guess Buffalo against LA, which kind of shifted some things, but we'll get to the opposite side of the ball here in a second, which was they had a really good run defense. 3.5 3.5 yards per carry, that was fourth in the league. 91.5 yards per game, that was ninth in the league. 16th in expected uh, points added by their run defense. But on the offensive side of the ball, Kyler Murray coming into this had four touchdowns, no picks, a basically a 123 pass rating, 200 yards per game, which was middle of the pack, but a 73% completion percentage. 73%! This game, he completed 21 of 34 passes. He had about 200, he had 270 yards, which is about the same. One touchdown, his first interception, and he was sacked, 76.5 pass rating. So he completed basically 62% of his passes. That's an 11 percentage point drop. Also, keep in mind when you talk about third downs and red zone and that kind of thing, um, offensively, the Arizona Cardinals were the best team in the NFL on third down. They were one for nine today. They were converting at a 58% clip, and I thought a lot of that was because typically they'd like to run the on second down now today they actually ran the ball a little bit more on first down but they had no success with that which we'll talk about a little bit later but if you look across the league those teams that are getting blown out when that kind of thing happens they usually don't have something to lean on you know we're going to talk about how man coverage is basically the run game but the run game is still very important and if you can't lean on that you can get into matchups where it's a problem and especially when you're seeing teams like arizona now we're seeing it with teams like minnesota these teams that have all these disguised looks and all these different packages where as soon as it's second and nine that gets thrown onto the table if you can't can't run the football and lean on that to to any kind of extent you're going to have problems and the benefit for the Lions is against everybody I think they're going to have some success running the football we only saw a few times last year that was taken away and especially once Gibbs came back it really wasn't because we had the versatility to go outside zone stretch plays duo plays counter plays and we saw that again in this one we saw a lot of the versatility Lions have tons of versatility rushing football so it's very difficult with two different types of backs as well as you know different pieces you want to see less blown blocks from guys like Parker Hesse on the fullback lead but different personnel 
no packages because of so much versatility and then the trickery, even though it didn't work with the reverse today. With so much variety in the run game, it's very difficult to take away the Lions rushing attack. Lions have that benefit, but then on the flip side, they're also still continuing to shut down everybody's run. They're forcing teams into these spots where it wasn't like Arizona could even kind of back out. There was a, there was a second out in this game where it was like, just because first down is not effective, you can't just lean on the run game and have success. Plus, I think the Lions are now getting better against the run when they go to some of their sub-package situations because when Pascal kicks in, he's been a little bit better. But Makai Wingo has been like a massive underrated piece because not only is he getting some pressure, but when he's in there against the run and teams try to run against him, he's actually doing well and our linebackers are scraping and making plays. But in this game, James Conner couldn't run the football. They had no run game. And now for the third straight week with DJ Reader, the Lions are again shutting down around, picking up right from last year. They are making so many teams one-dimensional. Some of it's the front give credit to that but it is also the personnel and now because of the personnel they can kind of back off their fronts a little bit but them shutting down a run is taking away that team's kind of like like thing to lean on like they're taking away everybody's thing to lean on and if you look at it Houston could not run the ball against Minnesota get blown out I don't believe Tennessee had any success running the football against the Green Bay Packers Cody Pollard six carries 14 yards Tajay Spears two carries seven yards so again just like our game, minimizing how much team can run the ball because they own time possession and have the lead, but also the aspect of teams can't run the football. If you can't run the football, you got a problem. And I thought our also, side note, I thought our linebackers tackled better today. They were pretty good in space tackling, and we were really keeping like any kind of check down to a check down. We had one you know, later in the game that I can remember where we missed a tackle. He ends up picking up a first down when they were kind of backed up in their own, own end zone. But outside of that, a lot of crucial tackling. Kirby had a massive stop. They tried a speed option out of their own end zone, which is a nice tech. They put Davenport in the action. Kirby makes a massive play gets us off the field you know Carlton also had the big play you know we'll talk about that in a little bit but a lot of big time tackling in space limiting check downs to stay at kind of check down range if you caught it for two yards not making it 12 but instead keeping it at two because we were just plastering those routes underneath but that's what the Lions have had going for them is that they are taking away anything that the team can lean on on the defense side of the ball that's where we have to start with this because this back end was incredible the mental toughness that they showed in today's game that was the big thing that's always a huge trait of a cornerback and I thought those guys showed that specifically Taron Arnold fighting back to get himself onto the field and showcasing that mental toughness Carlton Davis another side note big time against the run he has been great against the run to this point he's been very good as an open field tackler hasn't missed many tackles and today multiple plays on the same possession run stop you get another run stop by Carlton Davis out wide. Then on a fourth and one, so it's the third and two, he gets the run stop. Then on a fourth and one, they go to Carlton's side. They boot out of it, and Carlton Davis gets the stop, forced them off the field, which is essentially a turnover. Carlton Davis not only showed up in the pass game, but yeah, he gave up some receptions too, but he also showed up in the run game and, again, was big time once again in this game. The Lions' secondary is was really the missing piece, and the Lions invested in that, and they brought in veterans to the group with Amik Robertson, moving Brian Branch, and that group to this point has, to me, completely Oh, I'll, I'll exceed the expectations. And this was the best game by far from initial watch that they have played. They were incredible. They were incredible. I mean, you had the one touchdown drive to get things started, which was Kyler Murray taking off and then a big run on a read option. And then obviously the defensive hands of the face, which would have been a third and seven on the fade route that Brian Branch contested to Marvin Harrison, which was incomplete. They were big time in this game. And this was the best game that they have played. And man, when you tie that together with where the rest of this defense is already at, meaning the linebacker room, which has been a work in progress. It's been put together for years now. Derek Barnes, Alex Anzalone, Jack Campbell. Today, we got to see the depth. There was no Derek Barnes very early in the game. There was no Alex coming into the game. And it was Ben Neiman, Jalen Reese maven Malcolm Rodriguez, Jack Campbell, the ability to play on the line of scrimmage. We thought the linebacker depth was excellent in the preseason. And today's game just showcased the Lions do have really good linebacker depth. So we already knew that, and we got to see that, right? Because those guys were going to be thrown into the mix. Arizona, a lot of wide rushing scheme, a lot of a lot of sweet plays, a lot of stretches. They didn't run the ball well at all. Give linebackers some credit. Though I don't know that they played perfect, but linebackers are involved there. Number two, they could put our guys in the action with Kyler Murray utilizing his legs. So the linebackers, the depth we know is really strong there. And then the defensive line, which was you already knew Hutchinson was great. You added DJ Reader, which we already know what he is when he's on the field, especially against a run. Ali McNeil, which hopefully he's okay. He got banged up in this one too. Who's been great, took off last season. And now you add Marcus Davenport. You basically just added a couple more vets to that room that were proven pieces and with that defensive line playing and hitting on all cylinders immediately it was expected to be a top defensive line it honestly has performed that way to this point and now you get that secondary that's kind of coming along for the ride oh boy 
it is going to be a problem because to me, and I said this, you know, before the game, the veterans have been the difference on defense because those are the guys that we already know what to expect and they have lived to that at least. At very least, they've all lived adequately to what we had expected. And it's about the young guys coming along at Terion. And Terion grew up a lot today and he was forced to grow up today. He had to come back from an injury. He had to show mental toughness after another early defense pass interference. And he had to deal with Marvin Harrison Jr., Michael Wilson, which on the one little double move play that was almost another pick, he absolutely clamped him up. He had to grow up today and that he did right in front of our eyes so so impressed with the defense you can't run the football teams can't run the ball they're one-dimensional they don't have something to lean on and what do we see again today the Lions run defense which was going against an Arizona rushing attack that was the best in football in terms of yards per carry coming in it was well over five yards per carry I don't remember the exact number but it was great and the Lions shut it down. Now, part of that is they took it out of the game by leading and kind of controlling time of possession, controlling a ball control, field of position battle, all of those things. James Conner, who's been excellent, had nine carries for 17 yards. He averaged 1.9 yards per carry. Trey Benson had two carries for eight, so eight yards. Amari two carries for seven yards. They didn't run the ball with any success. There was no big runs. Kyler Murray was the only guy that had any kind of success rushing football, and it was very early after that it was shut down. We shut it down. Pass race lane integrity showed up in this game. I love the fact that the Lions were able to say, we want to play man, that's who we are, and we're just going to blitz out of that. Hey, we're going to play man coverage. We're just going to bring an extra rusher. I thought the game plan was on point as expected. Quarters early, man coverage still, brush lane integrity. I thought the game plan was as expected defensively. It's just the fact that they executed it. You can have a great plan. And I think we talked about a lot of this going into the game, that this is what we expected to happen, and it did. If you checked out the preview video, you, you probably heard a lot of these things that you saw today. But it was mainly the fact that they just went out there and executed those things. Because it's all great in practice, but if you can't do it, it doesn't matter. And the Lions executed those to such a high level. So defensively, where the Lions are at right now, this is a Super Bowl caliber defense. And what have we seen? I believe it is the last 10... I don't know if it's the last 10 years, but the last so many Super Bowls have all been a top 10 defense. Super Bowl teams have good defenses. And right now, the Lions are tracking towards having a really nice defense. Even give a shout out to Kendall Vildor, who stepped in there a little bit. We didn't even notice him when watching it live. Now, flip it around to the other side of the ball. Offensively, the Lions basically did exactly what the plan was coming into this. And, I, and I'll say this again. To me, Tampa Bay was not Lions forgetting that they're a run team and they can run the football. To me, it was, this is how we play Tampa Bay. We threw it a ton against Tampa Bay last year. We want to throw in early downs. That's the game plan. 43 times, 44 times. Last time, 55 times. I don't think they want to get to 55. If they were leading, they wouldn't have threw 55 times. It would have probably been near... 40s, mid 40s again, just like the last two times. But that was a game plan for Tampa. Now, could they have switched things? Could they have got out of it? Sure. In, in watching this game live, are the things that I would have liked to see better against Arizona? Absolutely. But that was not the Lions forgetting their identity. It was who they were playing. It is a week to week league, it is a matchup league. And that is one thing that you have to say about the Lions where you have to give them credit in the sense of while Aaron Glenn has what he wants to get to, which is, I want to get to man coverage, and now he has the personnel to do it, so he's allowing himself to do it. And truly, that man coverage is, like like Dan Campbell said coming into the year, that's the run game. Like, you you are able to sit in a man coverage. There's not a lot of great answers to that as an offense. Answers can be found for zone coverage, for off coverage. You can find answers for these things. But when you can line up and play one-on-one -on -one with the guy across from you, and you don't have a guy that's a massive weakness that teams could just go at because you got one weakness in man coverage, you could have a problem. You're going to have to throw an extra body over there. Lions have had that in the past. I remember, uh, you know, a couple years ago, we played Seattle, and they put up like 40-some points. We wanted to play man, but we'd have to double-team both DK and Lockett. And it was like, well, that's not going to help because we have nobody in the box anymore. So quarterback would take off. Lions aren't having to do that. They're able to play cover one. They're not being forced to put two deep safeties or roll someone over top of this guy to protect this guy. Maybe at times they do for the matchup. But for the most part, mixing quarters with man, man coverage is the run game for the Lions. They can lean in that. They can make teams uncomfortable. I'll go back to this stat because I haven't said over here on Believe, but I'm going to say it. When you look at when we played Green Bay last year and we won on Thanksgiving, we lost on Thanksgiving. Jordan Love was almost perfect passing in against zone. Against man coverage, he was about 50% completion percentage. That throws everything off when you can line up against a guy across from you and win one-on-one. -on -one. Now, there will be guys that we have to give extra help to, but you can't give help to everybody. And right now, the Lions don't have to because they have that run game on defense that they can just sit in man coverage and trust it. And especially when your defensive front's disciplined enough to do it, uh, you could definitely trust that that's going to be the case. But yeah, on the flip side, like... Again, the Lions are not a team that forgot their identity. They just had the matchup to definitely get back into it this week. You look at this statistically, Arizona was a good run defense. They were a top 10, top 5 run defense, depending on the numbers that you looked at. They were a good run defense coming in. Again, that's who they played, right? LA couldn't really run the ball. They had no offensive line in their game against the Arizona Cardinals. But the Lions were at a spot where you looked at their defensive line between Roy Lopez, Justin Jones, Bilal Nichols, Chris Tonga when he had to step in, LJ Collier, 
We like this matchup on paper. This is there. They're going to create some tackles for loss, and they did. We had one drive stall out with back-to-back -back runs, and we had to end up, uh, I think, punting on that drive. We had two runs that went for two yards. But you knew Justin Jones and Nichols were going to make a couple plays in the backfield, but it was about that matchup for me between the nose tackle, Roy Lopez. I thought we could create consistent movement there, and we did. That's what we leaned into to this game. It allowed us to get back into our identity because that was a good matchup for us on paper. And on top of that, it also forced them to start to rotate their D-line. And once they did that, I thought they got into a lot of trouble. You also got to see a lot of scheme versatility. Again, it wasn't all perfect. I think there were even times where the Lions could have ran the ball more, where they had third down looks where, and, and look, it's not like the Lions didn't do it. Like coming into this game, it was like, hey, run the ball on third down. Another thing that we talked about in the preview, and they did. Why? Because they play a lot of quarters on third down, so a lot of two deep safe use. But number two, they also put linebackers and edge rushers in defensive tackle spots. But we're not talking about like kicking in Josh Pascal defense tackle. We're talking about like kicking in Zayvon Collins the defensive tackle and they'll hold gaps with those guys which is where we saw the LA Rams score a touchdown against Arizona last week because once they started to do that they started to open up inside zone they started to have success and the Lions took advantage of that a few times they, they ran against that a few times I think they could have done it more in this game is running on those third down looks so again smart Smart game planning there. A couple times I would like to see us get into a check there to even run it more. And then also the one where Buda Baker blew it up for no yards. I would like to see us check out of that and get to something different. Maybe flip the play. Uh, maybe go to a pass play because as soon as I see that safety cheating in the box... Hard count, I got to get out of just running it there because I don't have a body to block him. Just snapping it doesn't make sense, and we did that. Still one of those little things that we need to improve upon. That could be put on Jared Goff, whoever needs to be put on. Hey, you got to get out of that. Like, I don't want to just run this regardless because we called the run. You could see him cheating down. Yeah, he could drop out, but maybe it just makes more sense to get into something else and just try, especially on first, let's just get into something else, right? But anyways... We were able to lean on that run game, and it was really good today. Montgomery, 4.6 yards to carry over, 100 yards rushing. And, man, that guy, he was the guy today. He made sense because he could wear down that D-line. He could allow for Lions to get 8, 9, 10-yard drives, which went at their best. They did today. They came out beautifully. It was about as on time as you can get. Goff was literally perfect passing in the first half. It was bootlegs. It was level throws. This is a team that plays a lot of cover three, a lot of quarters, keeps a lot of things in front of them. Second level, it was minimizing the interchanging linebackers and edge rushers that'll drop, that'll rush you don't know who's coming so you want to minimize that okay boom we'll get out of the pocket we'll minimize that that was the lion's answer to it play action plays well how do we get that going we have to go to run the football both linebackers are really aggressive laterally they like to fly around laterally so the lions were able to minimize that by the run game they came out running the ball well and montgomery was great that man just his legs don't stop turning the offense fine great job multiple times getting a push the play where they literally had him floating in the air and pushed him forward was ridiculous i don't know that i've ever seen something like that he went like five yards forward while hovering in the air that was amazing and then Jameer Gibbs did well as well. 16 carries, 83 yards. That's 5.2 yards per carry in this game. It was a Monty game, but both of these guys had success in this game. Gibbs just popped a couple of those. Again, it wasn't great all game long. For times, I would have liked to see them run it when they didn't. I also, though, did like to see towards the end more of the inside rushing. Let's get downhill, right? Let's double team. Let's get hard double teams. Let's push forward. Let's get downhill against this team. We don't need to go all outside zone all the time. The, the, it made sense on paper, and they came in and had success with it. But it was also, we can get downhill against the guys. Plus, the Lions running the ball in the outside zone opened up the play-action boot, which also, in turn, opened up the tight ends getting open because their linebackers were so aggressive and they played so aggressively that a way the Lions could take advantage of the aggressiveness was, hey, they're going to bite on the run. We opened up the play-action off of it. And they were able to lean on that. The six offensive linemen sets, Penny Sewell showed up. Graham Glasgow, I didn't think they have the best game. One thing for offense is definitely the pre-snap penalties. Got to cut those down. The false starts are a problem. Cannot have as many of those as we had. Also, Amon Ross St. Brown. It is official. Amon Ross St. Brown has not been figured out. I was told Amon Ross St. Brown by a few had been figured out after week one. He has not been figured out, okay? Amon Ross St. Brown just had a weird week one. We had multiple opportunities to get the ball, and we didn't, whether that was thrown to him or not. That being said, St. Brown is that dude. We saw it again today. St. Brown is that dude. And uh, St. Brown, whether that's laying blocks, which he was super willing to step in, and we saw that today, the hook and ladder where, you know, he did catch it, but it was also the hook and ladder that he set up, which was a beautiful play. Ben Johnson getting super creative there, getting in his bag a little bit. Or it was just simply him being the go-to guy in the have-to-have -have situations. A red zone touchdown, a whip route, Starling Thomas is all over him. Big, strong, physical corner, makes the grab contested. End the game. Third, uh, third down and 12. I believe it was the third down and 12. We had that deep dig route. Amon Ross St. Brown. First down on who? It was Sean Murphy Bunting, who is, you know, really their weakness in the back end. He's been the guy that's been inconsistent. So, Amon Ross St. Brown, you don't have an answer for him. All right. It's just, it, it's just a week-by-week -week thing. That being said, though, St. Brown is still that dude. Also, Lions red zone offense. That was the biggest issue last week. It was the Lions just not scoring touchdowns. You know, seven red zone trips, one touchdown. That's a problem. How do they do today? 
they cashed in today. And that was the biggest thing. The Lions cashed in. Now, big reason for that, you were able to run the ball. When you can run the ball inside the 20, you're going to cash in more often than not. And that's one thing the Lions have typically had is the ability to cash in because they've been able to run the ball. Last couple weeks, not as great. Specifically last week, not great. And then we try to substitute running it. We try to go screens. Didn't block well. It all kind of does the same thing. Offensive line's not blocking. They make the play. This week, we ran the ball well, so we were able to help ourselves cash in in those spots. We had some big chunk runs when we got into those spots, and then again, on top of that, the one, we didn't even get into the red zone because we did the hook and ladder just outside of the red zone, which was a super creative play call to not get inside this condensed, you know, we're getting inside the condensed part of the field. Let's stay out of it and just score a touchdown. Well, how are we going to do that? It's going to be difficult to just throw a shot to the end zone, so instead, we're going to run a hook and ladder where everybody's going to bite on St. Brown. And you utilize kind of that mash that they're looking in defensively perfectly. You have Gibbs run through the line of scrimmage. You flip it back to him, and he's walking into the end zone. So red zone woes, much more cleaned up. That doesn't mean that we were great offensively. We still left things out there. We were crazy efficient passing the football. We didn't get really the shot plays. Credit to Arizona. They kept everything in front of them. We didn't really create those. Um, like maybe we wanted to come in and create those. But Dave Montgomery was awesome. Had the little finger nail catch, which was great as well. We just didn't score on that possession. So we got to figure out, I think, some of the stunts give us problems at times. You you know, you're seeing a lot of that flexibility versus a team like this. Linebacker, D-line, don't know who's coming, don't know who's going. They got a sack on uh, Frank Ragnow running one of those stunts up front. We saw that. I think their ability to take away some of the play action shots was pretty big, but we took that one shot play to uh, JMO just out of bounds, just kind of pulled him out of bounds a little bit in this one. We still left things out there. You know, we had another drive that was the two failed runs. You take the shot to JMO on third down, you check out of it. That one's incomplete. One drive that was cut short because, you know, you fail the fullback dive, and I thought on that play they should have challenged it to play before because I thought they had the first down, they tried to fullback dive. Another drive that was shut down with the uh, reverse on the play to JMO, which lost seven yards. Good play by the defense, and he come back, you throw the pick, which was actually the almost exact same play that we ran last time we played Arizona, which is we just did it to St. Brown. They ended up dropping the interception, but same quick play play fake. Throws it over the middle. St. Brown, they dropped the interception. This time they didn't. And uh, in a weird way, like running that same play was kind of weird because it didn't work last time, but we, we did it again. And I thought it made sense. Like, hey, pull the linebackers, get behind the second level. They're interchanging guys. That's a window that you could create there just so Evan A picked it. Didn't see the edge rusher dropped out. Should have, but didn't because the off-ball linebacker didn't blitz. He stayed in, so he didn't notice the edge rusher drop out. Throws a pick. Don't want to keep drives alive better than we have been, especially on short yard situations, third down and one, fourth down and one, third down and two. Like, we need to definitely convert those at a higher clip. I don't have an issue with them doing that, but that does need to get better, and I think at times, we maybe have to get into better checks at the line of scrimmage based on whatever the defense is showing, that we could just get a better look at it. That needs to get better, that's for sure, and again, the one was a flag. We went from a third and one to a false start, which backed us up and kind of derailed, and we had to get off the field there because, you know, you had a false start, so little things like that, you know, bad penalties in bad spots, Third and one, third and two. Like, we got to pick up first downs more consistently in those spots. And when it was a seven point game and the offense had to go out there and seal the deal, they did just that, right? So it's always about, you know, the crucial moments, right? Not going to be perfect, but it's about the critical moments. Too many times in the middle there, got stopped on third and shorts, those kind of things. But at the same time, you also had, when you needed it most, the offense came through and did their job. We look like a defensive team through three weeks this season, which is crazy, but I absolutely love it because, again, the offense, I know what the offense is going to be about. I know they have a run game to lean on. And uh, I still feel like, you know, that passing game, 18 of 23 today, wasn't necessarily bad. You know, there were just things that were potentially left out there a little bit. Wasn't bad, though, passing the football because our matchup was better for the run game. And, and plus, you know, we saw last week, like the Arizona Cardinals didn't think they were a huge pressure team, but they do mix up a lot of looks. They play some weird match looks. They'll play a couple underneath defenders, and you don't know who's coming in that front level, so it can make it a little bit tricky to really know, you know, who's going to be underneath there. So the Lions just kind of leaned away from that, leaned into the ground game, and it worked out perfectly. So I think on both sides we came in with a really nice plan and I think the game kind of went as expected I don't think there was a ton of like wild cards in this game I think a lot of things went as expected and to lose you know really the penalty battle like we did but make up the turnover battle on the defense with a fourth down stop and also an interception was beautiful and we we're still picking up chunks we passed it still seven and a half yards per pass play which was nice only two sacks on the day but again the key was containing Murray I didn't care about any sacks I just wanted to contain that guy and we did that but we needed it most Aiden Hutchinson came up with a crucial sack and then again third down efficiency still 50% in this game like it's not there's, there's things that we left out there but we still were 50% on third down which is pretty darn good and Arizona was one for nine on third down that tells you our defense that especially because a lot of the spots we just sit in a man coverage so for the Lions in this one like there's things that need to get better nine penalties is a problem and you want to get to some better checks, I think, at times. But they played to their game plan, and they played it beautifully in this game. And they were able to lean on their defense, and their defense was able to bring them home. So this was absolutely beautiful. A heck of a win by the Lions of this one to move to 2-1. and one. They absolutely needed it, and I'm very happy. 
coming to you guys with a review of a win. I'm going to leave it here, man. We'll keep an eye on kind of the injury updates as we go through the week. But until then, thank you, Prop, for watching, and we out.